the cannabinoids and GABA, the brain's most common inhibitory neurotransmitter. How have I not done this one already? Because it is fantastic. Also, Elena, who posted this question, you have great pots. I'm Lex Pelger. I do can education for CV Sciences, the makers of Plus CBD, who has excellent CBD and THC products. And I have kids playing in the background. For a book chapter on GABA and endocannabinoid system, here is a free one that is quite nice. And for a great popular science write-up, I really enjoyed this Taking It Slow with GABA on Project CBD by Lex Pe Pelgar? Pelger? That article includes this excellent Silly Symphony version of The Tortoise and the Hare, which we just had to watch after my firstborn saw it up on the screen. But it is a good metaphor for what GABA does. <laughs> What's important about GABA is it's the brain's basic red light. For neural signaling. Glutamate is the green light, is the most common excitatory neurotransmitter. GABA is the most common inhibitory neurotransmitter. It's a way to slow down the brain from overreacting. It's a really important baseline neurotransmitter. So the first question is, how does the endocannabinoid system itself interact with the GABA neurons? And it is a fascinating answer because the CB1 receptors, the first discovered cannabinoid receptors that mediate the psychoactive effects of THC that are so widespread in your brain, do you know where the most CB1 receptors are? They are on the GABAnergic neurons, as in the neurons that produce GABA, that's where the most CB1 receptors are. So when you're activating your CB1 receptors, you're often dialing down the signal. And as a technical aside, for those interested in neural wiring, the type of neurons they are, are on interneurons, which are also known as relay neurons or connector neurons or intermediate neurons. And classically, they, they insert themselves into a neural circuit, and if activated, they dial down the signal. And so much of what the brain does is taking in sensory input and deciding whether to react or not. And you don't want to overreact to incoming stimuli. That is a general purpose of what GABA does, and the CB1 receptor helps to activate that. So what binds to these GABA receptors besides the neurotransmitter GABA itself? The benzodiazepines do, the classic anti-anxiety medications of today. Quaaludes do, the uh, psychoactive that a certain generation raves about. And alcohol also binds there. And so those general sed sedative effects are attributed to GABA. In fact, researchers already knew that CBD causes its anti-anxiety effects via GABA, or at least partially via GABA. And these Spanish researchers thought to figure out why. And it turns out that in rats, if they have no CB1 receptors, then CBD does not cause an anti-anxiety effect. So it seems like the CBD is working via CB1 and via GABA to cause the anti-anxiety effects that CBD does. Finally, there's a whole other story about how the endocannabinoid system works with the GABA system to alter learning, memory, and neuroplasticity.